so till now what whatever we have seen is uh, in terms of calculations uh, we have seen the quick uh, quick view calculations quick table calculations and the calculated fields okay so the third third calculation or the third type of calculation is the lod calculation or uh, like if i have to expand this the level of detail calculation so what happens in what happens is uh, in tableau like whatever we are going to put in our view on on that particular level our calculations get calculated so let me just first show you what i'm trying to say so let's say if i put in category here and i let's say i have some of sales here or let me just put in the labels part so whatever is there in the view accordingly the sum of sales will be calculated here let's say if i make it to from category to some other level like sub category then it will be calculated on the sub category level okay so this is the most granular granular level here so whatever uh, variable uh, in terms of like whatever measure we want to see okay that will always be calculated on the most granular level okay so even if i remove this category you will get pretty much the same amount here and if i have to put in category there as well then um, from the category wise there will be first segregation and again the amount will be same at the sub category level only if uh, let's say if this is not the case and let's say if i have to get it on some other level let's say region level so in that case the same division for the sum of sales would be on the region level okay so this is how currently it is being done in tableau but what if for the scenarios where we don't want um, the aggregation to happen this way but in a way that we want it to happen okay so uh what i'm trying to say is whenever you want to change the aggregation of the view okay not per the view okay not as it it is calculated automatically here then we used our then we use our uh, lod calculations here so if you see currently i have uh, sum of sales ca uh, calculated on the sub category level okay but what if i want to see uh, on the sub category level the category wise sales from which it is coming so what i mean is let me just quickly uh, get the totals for you first okay so what i mean is let's say furniture total is so even if i remove this you can see furniture is 41,10,454 then office supplies 37,87,732 and then technology 47,44,671 so what if these totals is something that i want on the sub category level okay if i remove the category from here in the sub category i won't get these totals okay so how can i do that i can do that using the lod calculations in this case i uh, so again there are three types of calculation fixed include and exclude so for the fixed calculation is what we are going to use here now so the fix says irrespective of whatever is there in the view okay i can fix uh, the calculation to a particular uh, ca uh, i mean to a particular dimension there so let's see how to do that so what i mean here is so let me just have a uh, fix from here so again there is slightly different way of writing the uh, lod calculation we always start start them with a curly bracket okay then we write the type of calculation that we want so in this case fixed okay so again this is so as you can see on the right so we'll first fix the dimension then we have a separator and then we have the aggregation and the expression for the aggregation so we we are going to fix what in this case category because you want to see the uh, calculation on the category level and then what is the aggregation that we want to see that is sum and what is the uh, measure there that is sales okay then we can just close the bracket so as you can see i have fixed my category 
and then I've obtained all the sum of sales. Now when I put this uh, into this text region, OK, and let me just rather let me just put this on the text. Now you can see this is something that I wanted earlier. Even if I remove the category from here now, I'll get these totals only. So wherever you, you are seeing 41 lakh, this is these are all my furniture category. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Yeah, so for wherever you are seeing this 41 lakh, 10,454, these are all my furniture category. So earlier, if I have to do this, this won't be possible because it will be calculated at the subcategory level. But now it is calculated at the category level. But for the each subcategory, we have these numbers obtained here. So again, what can be the use of this? OK, so let's say instead of this, let me just put it here once and let me make it to discrete so that I can see the numbers here. Also, also let me just get the sum of sales here as well. So I'm just telling you what can be the use case for this. And again, discrete. OK, so the first one here is my sum of sales. Yeah, so first one here is my sum of sales like what we were getting earlier and the next one is the calculation that we have written the fixed one. OK, so if you see now, so this is my sales for a particular subcategory. OK, and this is my sales for that particular category. OK, so let's say bookcases. So total sales in furniture is 41,10,454 out of which bookcases has this much amount of sales. So let's say uh, we needed a table whereby we actually uh, needed a percentage to be calculated this way. So let me take another calculated field here. And let me just have this sum of sales and then this sum of sales at the category level. And let me just get this here. OK, now also let me just what is this calculation name calculation to right? Let me just again if you remember if you want to change the properties of a particular measure here, you can just go to default properties, go to this number format. Change it to percentage. OK, so these are my percentage distribution of uh, the subcategories from their categories. OK, so what can be the possible thing here? So I'll tell you what 90% of the times these LOD calculations like this one, what we have written here. OK, the subcategory, the category one, fixing the category and getting the sum of sales. 90% of the. 90% of the time they are actually used as an intermediary calculation or an intermediate step for our final calculation. So uh, in a most likely scenario, this could be our uh, final visualization where we needed only these percentages here. OK. Percentages from of the subcategory share from their particular category. So this might be our uh, only thing here that we had to uh, build in. OK, so this could be the most uh, viable scenario for which we had to prepare the other two calculations. OK, so this is the reason uh, we use our fixed calculation to calculate things which are not on the view. OK, whenever we want to set something irrespective of, of, of the view, we use the fixed calculation. Now, any questions on this? Anyone any questions on this? See if you have any questions related to this, I'll I'll suggest ask it right away because with every other uh, uh, calculation here, we are going to go one step higher from here. So if you don't get this, if you have any 
confusion here i'm quite sure that you won't be able to understand the other parts so if, even if there is anything that you want me to repeat here i can do that so three things just remember the basic idea is uh, in tableau whatever is there on the view as per the view things get calculated if we want to second thing if we want to uh, fix something and show it away from the view uh, which is not on the view uh, then we have to use the fixed calculation okay and third third thing is mostly these uh, calculations these lod calculations are used as an intermediary steps for the final calculation like in this case so this would be something that we wanted in first place okay now let me just see if i can just get the okay i'm not getting it it's okay so this would be my final calculation okay yeah okay let us see uh one of the use cases for this before we move on to the um, some other level so let me just okay so in here let me first explain you this uh what this visualization means and then uh then we'll see how to build this so if i hover over this this says 62 customers made 30 purchases okay so what i'm trying to find from here would be what are my distinct count of customers okay and what are the numbers of number of orders purchased by them so if you see on my x axis here i have order by customers okay so number of orders that they have placed so let's say the let's say if i have to interpret this one so 50 customers 50 there were 50 such customers who made purchases uh, with 34 orders there okay like who have given for 34 orders so there were 50 such customers there were 62 customers uh, such customers who made uh, or let's say who have given 30 orders so again you can interpret it both ways who have given 30 orders or who made 30 purchases okay then let's say there were 42 such customers who made 27 purchases so in a way i'm trying to find out my number of customers who have given a certain uh, number of orders okay or who have made certain number of purchases who have done certain number of purchases so this is what i'm trying to find it okay so let's see how we can do it so in here uh, I have created one calculation that is order by customers. Okay, so I can just show you the calculation uh, again, same way. So I'm fixing the customer name. Okay, and I'm uh, doing a distinct count of order IDs. So that way I'll get my customers, the count of customers there. Okay. So let us just rewrite this. I'll fix uh, fix the customer name and then I'll do the count of uh, distinct order IDs. And again, this is the notation how we write our fixed calculation always starts with a curly bracket ends with a curly bracket. Okay, and there is always a separator to separate the dimension from the measure here. Okay, so as soon as I do this, let me have a new sheet. So this will by default come as a measure here. Okay, but I don't want it as a measure. Since I want a timeline, I want it as a dimension. So there are two ways to do that. Either I can just click on this down arrow and convert to dimension. Okay or else okay where is it gone yeah or else i can just simply put in uh, i mean simply click on it and put it into the dimension part okay so now when i get it into the columns now you can see i have got a timeline okay so the customers have made one order 15 order 17 order likewise okay and uh, then uh, I think the second thing is it would be my customer names. Yeah. 
so second thing would be my customer names here okay in the rows part but again as we see this is a dimension here so it is going to come as a dimension here but what i want is as a measure here and uh, what i want is the distinct counts of these customers so now i have the same visualization here okay so again same way we have the tool tip here as you can see 62 customers have purchased 30 orders okay or have made 30 orders or have given 30 orders then again other way around also you can interpret it uh, 30 orders were purchased by 62 customers uh, let's say 32 orders were purchased by 53 customers and so on and so forth any questions anyone any questions on this so basically we have fixed the customer name here and then did the count of order id that is the uh, main thing here and then we got it as a measure here and we converted it into a dimension first because we wanted the timeline and then we have seen the distinct count of customers but in here this is the important part so i fixed the customer name and got the count of order ids So, a one question. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, So, is this the only way this can be done? For example, even in the previous sheet, when we are talking about percentages, uh, is LOD a compulsory requirement there, or is that the simpler way, or is it more hygiene to do it that way? Uh, so again, the again there is a blend of this uh, many questions in this one so this is the only way i wouldn't say uh, depend upon the visualization that we are trying to create at that particular time like in the previous example what we had here uh, yes uh, i i would say this is the uh, this is one of the way that you can do it okay and uh, again you again you you should try it off and let me know if there is any other way we can do it because what i see is uh, maybe we could have used the other calculation as well maybe let let us try that that as well uh, whereby if we have uh, okay sum of sales is what we need right sum of sales from a subcategory divided by sum of sales from a category is there any other way like we can do this i don't think so in this case okay this is what we needed right but the first sum of sales is what we need from the subcategory and the other second one is what we need from the category so that won't be possible for a calculation okay directly so we have to first fix the category wise calcul uh, sum of sales there right and uh, even in other cases again uh, is this the same thing can we use bins or anything like that or this is again the more hygienic thing to do right uh, see in this to... case as well in this case as well you want to use the bins okay but what will you create the bins on is my question here so in here we have order by customers here okay so let's say even if um, this is what you have right order um so we have basically taken the order id i don't think that it would be possible that way as well okay because what we are doing here is we are trying to figure out the number of orders by the customers okay and there are two things involved here it's not the calculation on one thing that we can create a bins on it and bins is something if you remember i told you is created on the measures so let's say if we have to do on the sales part as well or maybe count uh, of order ids let's say mm, let me create one calculation here and see if that is possible as well again it's good that you are thinking on in that direction okay so let's say this is what i have okay and let me just try it out on a new sheet if i create a bin on this is it first thing is it possible no 
Okay, so the in on the calculated uh, variable itself, the binning is not possible. Okay. Getting it, I all I'll get here would be my distinct counts here, the total of the distinct counts, twenty-five thousand seven hundred twenty-eight here. Right. So this is the distinct count of orders, right? Order is, of course, there's a total number of orders anyway. Ah, uh, this these are yeah. This is going to be count only. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, and in here we have customer-wise distinct count of orders there. So the, we need to uh, see that thing as well. Uh, that these are two different things. Okay. So yeah. So in a nutshell, if I have to answer your question, uh, it would not be possible without using the fixed calculations like what we are trying to do here in the uh, previous two cases what we have seen. Okay, okay. Let me see if I have more use cases for you. I think we can use this one. Okay, this one also contains the. Okay. So what? So this one also contains a fixed calculation. So what I'm trying to do here is now I'm trying to find out my uh, loyalty level of my customers. Okay, whereby I would say um, those who have made the those who have not made any repurchase. Okay, those who have made a repurchase within the six months, and those who have repurchase sorry those who have repurchase after six months and those who have made repurchase within six months again this is quite a frequent use case uh, when we are dealing with the retail data there so again that is something that we can do in tableau as well so let us see end to end how to make this so let let us first see the back end calculation for this and then we'll see how to do this so if you see here i have customer id wise order dates for all the customers okay for a particular order id there can be one order id uh, date as well there can be uh, many other i mean multiple orders dates as well okay if the customer has ordered multiple times okay so what i am going to do is for a particular customer i have my order ids here i am going to find out from these order ids what is my minimum order date okay i will call that as my first order date Okay, so let us see until uh, this part. So I think I've already created a calculation. So, um, yeah, so I have just fixed my customer ID. Okay, so at the customer ID level, I have fixed my customer ID and I have uh, called the calculation for minimum of order date. Okay, so I need minimum of these states. So let's say, let us see for this customer. If this customer double A six four five nine five has ordered four times, okay, first on fourth of uh, December two thousand twelve. Uh, sorry, it's twelfth of April two thousand twelve. Then sixth of September two thousand thirteen. Then ninth of okay, no, 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 no. Sorry, that is the other way around only. So it's fourth of December two thousand twelve. Ninth uh, of uh, June two thousand thirteen. Thirteenth of uh, September two thousand thirteen and first uh, november 2015 so what i what this calculation will do is this will give me the first order date that is the minimum of these four which will be in this case 4 12 2012 that is 4th december 2012 and it will everywhere show this particular date okay so this is how my fixed calculation will work that is for the first order date are we clear till here Yes, fine. Yes, okay. Yes, now what we are going to do is we are going to get our second order date. Okay. So for the second order date. Okay. Let me just. Okay. This might scare you. First, let me just show you the logic here for the second order date. So what I'm going to do now is for the second order date, we know this is our second order date, right? So if my order date okay is greater than first order date
okay so if my order date is greater than my first order date then i want the order date otherwise i don't want anything okay so if you see here uh this is equal to this that's why it's null this date will anyways be equal to uh, will be greater than this then i have this date itself because this is anyways the minimum date right so all three of these dates would be greater than these dates again these date is effectively the minimum of uh, these dates which is the first order date. so wherever i have my order date greater than my first order date it will be uh, that order date will come up there otherwise it will show a null let us see with the some other as well some other uh, customer id so let's say this is my first order date for this customer it has come up everywhere for this customer now wherever this is equal to this it will not come up but wherever my order date is greater than first order that order date will come up okay here it is populated now what i want here is for this logic to be there i have created one more calculation that is my second order date in here now i need the minimum of these states so if i want if i have to uh, let's say instead of this if i put the second order date logic here so that is the same thing but i have just in order to save me from one more calculation there i have written the calculation here itself that same calculation that i showed you just now in the second order date logic okay that is the if the first order date if the order date is greater than first order date then the second order date same calculation i have written here so in order to just save some uh time and also one extra calculation uh, i have written the calculation here itself again the logic is still the same now i need the minimum of th those second order dates uh, so those uh, second order date logic things uh, i mean the calculation that i created from here second order these dates okay again i'll fix it to the customer id level this is my level so everything i am doing on the customer id level okay so now as you can see out of these dates populated here 96 2013 39 2013 1st uh, 11 2015 as you can see it has given me the minimum of this which is 96 2013 okay so it has populated this everywhere now the things are simple what i've done is a date diff calculation between these two dates again this is something that i want you guys to write okay i just give you 2 minutes quickly and you give me a date diff calculation in in terms of months for these two dates order date and my uh second order date I hope you guys are trying. So I have these two dates remaining with me and I want you to give me a date diff in terms of months for these two dates. anyone trying at least yes no
Is anyone trying? Uh, yes, subject uh, you are visible, audible. Yeah. Okay. Waiting for so, yeah. Sorry. Wait for a minute. Uh, so any, anyone trying this calculation? Which one second order? Uh, ask for the third order. Third order date. No, no, I want the date difference between these two dates. OK, let me just continue. Let me just continue. Maybe I should not give the sums in the last class. So I, I see two people uh, walked out of the class by uh, seeing that question there. <laughs> OK. So if you see now, uh, the only calculation that remains now would be the date difference between the two. And again, very simple one. Uh, it's again the month date difference between the first order date and the second order date. OK, so if you see here, this is my first order date 4-12-2012 and this is my second order date 9-6-2013. So there is clearly a six month difference here. OK, so I hope this back end, all these back end calculations are clear to you guys. Now let us see what we had to build. So uh, again, from that calculation, I have created one more calculation that is uh, my loyalty level. Again, a fairly simple one. So the month for repurchase is if the month of repurchase is greater than or equal to six, then repurchase after six months. Else if uh, the month for repurchase is less than six, then repurchase within six months. Else no repurchase. And then I have an ended the calculation here. So this is the final calculation that we wanted. So these are the three levels we wanted. No repurchase, repurchase after six months and repurchase within six months. And as we can see, as soon as I, we put the uh, customers count there, OK? So we can see 68.82% of the customers did no repurchase. Uh, 23.15% of, of the customers repurchase after six months and 8% of the customers uh, repurchase within six months. If you want, you can again uh, write this calculation in terms of three, three months as well. So maybe uh, three months and then six months, then nine months, then 12 months and then uh, no repurchase. So the idea would be quite similar here. OK, once you write the calculation for three months, you can try doing it out uh, yourself for three months here. OK, uh, Abhishek, yeah, one question. So there we have taken the months between repurchases and uh, the threshold as less than greater than equal to six or less than six. So if a person has made, say, three purchases in the same month, it will come as no repurchase, right? Uh, can you just repeat your question? Sorry. No, no, not a problem. So the variable we have created is months for repurchase. Okay. And we have taken a uh, lower bound as less than six and upper is greater than equal to six. OK, right. And just in the previous example that you gave as a class task, uh, we were checking the number of months. So 4, 12, 20, 12 and maybe 6, 9, 6, 20, 13, right? So it was Calculating the number of months from the December month of 2012 to June of 2013 is six months. Right. Right. So I'm saying, say this person has made three transactions in December 2012 only. So 4, 12, 2012, 5, 12, 2012, and say 27, 12, uh, 2012. Yeah. So by the logic that we are creating now as months of repurchase, it will show us no repurchase for the person, right? Yeah, if that is equal to uh, if let's say if there are purchases on the same day, right? Same day or in the same months on different dates of the month. 
say in December 2012. Okay, I got your I got your question. But in that case as well. So let us consider first the first example whereby the it's in the same month, but the dates are different. Okay. Yeah. So let's say there is 4 12 2012. Then there is let's say 9 12 2012. Then there is let's say 13 12 2012. And then let's say uh, 30 12 2012. Okay, yeah. so these are four uh, month, uh, same month purchases. But what would be the minimum purchase out of these four? The first one. Okay, yes. so the first one will be populated in all the four of them. Okay, right. Yes. Now the second order date would be what we have seen is like if this order date is greater than this order date. Hmm. Okay, then uh, it should uh, come up as a this order date. Okay, Nine, first 12. this order date only. OK, so in in the other three cases, again, it will come like 9, 12, 2012, 13, 12, 2012 and 1, 12, uh, let's say 30, 12, 2012 here. OK, now out of these three dates for the second order date, we need the minimum of that. That would be how much? 9, 9 12, 2012. Again, this would be. Uh, 13, yeah, 12. this no, no, this no, would same. be 9, 12, 2012 only. Yeah, yeah these yeah. four dates will be populated again. But what we have taken is we have taken the difference between these two dates, the first order date and the second order date, this date and this date. So again, in that case, uh, if this date is greater than this date, uh, sorry, uh, the month differential between these two dates would be, would zero. be zero. Yeah, okay. that is what I was So saying. that would yeah. be categorized under the repurchase within six months. Okay, so anything less than what we see, our calculation says, If that is if it is less than six, then repurchase within six months. OK, if that is greater than equal to six, then repurchase after six months. If you okay, want, uh, if you want to take done. this. Yeah, right. Okay. Madhu, yeah, if I can come in. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it counts as zero and uh, still can counts under less than six. Yeah, right. right. Not okay, null. If it is in the same month, then it uh, comes as zero. As it's not a null value, it's a zero value. Yeah. No, but and, if I take, yeah. uh, if you go to the data example, can you just remove this? Uh, so if I look for the example that you are showing now, the one just above that, six four five eight six. Okay. Four, five, eight, customer six. ID. Yeah, the customer ID just before the one that we were discussing. Yeah, this one, right? Ha ha ha. Twenty three yes. nine twenty fourteen. So because this customer didn't have any repurchase, it came as null. What no, we are yes. saying that if this customer maybe. had another repurchase, sorry, Sami, just maybe 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah. So if this customer had another repurchase on say 24, 9, 2014, uh, the month difference would come as zero and we would consider that as in the uh, group less than equal to six. Yes, right. Or less and than six. Yes, and you can see uh, you can validate this with this particular customer ID. See, it has only two dates only. OK, but yeah, there here it is 12 months uh, difference is 12 months. But again, the uh, calculation would be uh, working quite similarly only. OK, so wherever it is null, it would consider it as uh, see even no if part. you let's say you don't want it as null and you want it as zero, we can do that as well, making some tweak in the calculation. Again, something that I don't want to go in right now, but uh, yeah, so that is the first case there uh, when there is a repurchase not on the same date, but let's say if it is on the same date and you want to consider that scenario as well, then maybe uh, the equal to sign from here, you can remove it and maybe get in here less than uh, equal to six case. OK, let's say if you want to consider that Doesn't scenario. Matter. Mm, I I think maybe maybe again I have to check that. No, this this itself will work. I'll check. What are you written now? Uh, yeah. Even in that scenario. Mm, yeah. So I'm quite sure that like uh, what you you just now asked uh, is clear with this example now. Yes. Yes. Now it's clear. Okay. Hmm. I think uh, okay. Let me just quickly cover this as well, and then we can take a small break. Uh, so basically, till now, what I'm doing is I'm just covering up all the 
use cases on the fixed thing so once you are clear with the fixed thing i think then you will be better able to understand the other two include and the exclude ones so in here the same uh, the calculation is fairly simpler here so what i've done here is let me first explain you the visualization here so basically i want to see what number of or let's say in this case what percentage of my customers have done a uh, purchase in a particular year which were actually acquired in uh, their um, original year okay so let's say uh, let me just read out this graph so all the 100% of um, purchases were made by the customers that were acquired in 2012 only next one says uh, in 2013 out of the 100% purchases 84.53% of the purchases were done by the customers that were acquired in 2013 and 15.47% of the sales were done by the customers that were acquired in 2012 okay now let me just interpret 2014 in 2014 okay out of the 100% sales 70.03% of the sales were done by the customers that were acquired in 2014 itself okay 14.19% is done by the customers that were acquired in the 2013 uh, year 2013 these customers okay these orange customers and 15.78% of the sales uh, were done by the customers that were acquired in 2012 same way we can interpret the last one as well in 2015 56.13% of the sales were done by the customers that were acquired in 2015 14.56% of the sales were done by the customers who were acquired in 2014 14.35% of the sales were done by the customers acquired in 2013 and 14.96% of the sales were done by the customers that were acquired in 2012 okay so this is the interpretation of uh, the visualization here we call such analysis as the cohort analysis so basically they are coming from a particular cohort cohort can be um, called as a group so this all these belong to 2015 cohort these belong to 2014 cohort these belong to 2013 cohort and blue ones belong to 2012 co um, cohort again uh, the calculation here is fairly simpler than what we have seen till now so let me just have a new table so all i need is a order date um, where is my order date yeah and all i need is a year from the order date only so i'll be good till here and what i need is i think sum of sales is what yeah so i have my sum of sales okay and basically i want the bar and i want a quick table calculation that is percentage of total okay and this is not what i want i want it on the basis of okay i want it based i want it to be categorized on the first order date so let me just put this into the color part and one more important thing so the table computation is currently table across that is going from left to right i want it to be done from top to bottom so i'll make it table down now we have got what we actually wanted this is the same visualization what we had in the previous one okay so the one thing that you need to take care of is so once you have the order date and sum of sales in place we have to categorize categorize it by first order date okay basically the year of first order date uh, then it will be broken down that way and then the final uh, calculation that we have done here is uh, my uh, percentage of total and that needs to be computed using table down approach so by default it will give you table across approach this is this will give me overall 100% of these cells that is something that i don't want what i want is in a particular year out of the 100% sales okay how much is done by which cohort so in order to do that i have to do this computation top down rather than table across here and this will basically give me the Uh, cohort analysis that i wanted okay again uh, the calculation that here uh, that i have used here is my first order date calculation only if you remember customer fixing the customer id i have got my minimum order date 
so the same calculation I've used. So the year of this first order date I've used for this calculation. If I use instead of this year, if I use this year, would it make a difference? Yes. Right, that's why we needed the other year here. So in case someone is thinking why we have used since we are only using the year part of this uh, date only, so we could have used the order date year part as well. In that case, it will give you 100% for all the years. That is what I don't want. That's why I've used the first order date year. Any questions here? Anyone, any questions? Okay. Uh, so let us first see the exclude part now. Okay, so the next ca calculation is the exclude calculations. So as the name is suggesting, like whatever is there on the view, okay, just subtract something from that particular view and then do the calculation there. Okay, so let us understand with this one. So as we can see, so we have region wise. Okay, so we have year wise, month wise for a particular region, the sum of sales, as you can see. So let's say for 2012, for all the months, for all the regions here, okay, we have uh, the sales value here. Again, in the filters, I have taken country as the United States, okay. So now, if you see here, uh, so I hope this particular part is clear here. Like this is a default view, if we have to call it that way, this is a default view, okay. So for a particular a region, for for that particular year for that particular month we have sales so let me just explain with one example so let's say for the year 2012 in the month month of march for the southern us region we have 32 uh, dollar sales that are there okay again let me just take one more example before we move ahead so for the eastern us region in the year 2013, for the month of September, we have 29,445 sales. Okay, so this is the way uh, how we can interpret these. So if you see now, uh, in this particular case, we have our view computed this way. Okay, but what I want to see here is, let me just first remove the grand totals here. Uh, that might make you, again, might confuse you. Okay, but what I want to see is preserving this view. I want to see the uh, sum of sales without region as well. So what I mean is if I remove the region from here, I want to see the sales this this way as well. Okay, so let me just see. Let me just show you. Okay, so let's say for the month of February. Uh, very less amount of sales. Okay, so let's say I have these four sales here. This is around 7,013. Okay, so in the year 2012, for the year February, my total sales are 7,013. Okay, but here it is divided region wise. But what if I want to see the, these sales? Uh, the year and month wise as well without the region. Okay, so what I mean is if I remove this one, so and if I see this one, this is 7013. So that that is something that I want in my this view as well. So how can I do that? Again, I can write a calculation here. Okay, same way. I have to exclude my region from this view. want my sum of sales okay if i use this calculation now then you can see alongside i have the other calculation as well so if you see here this is uh, how much 2973 and this is the 7013 sales here okay let's say if i don't want it here but i want it on the 
tool tip here. Then whenever I hover over it, I won't see this here, but I will see the sales here in the tool tip. Uh, the one that you can see in calculation five. OK, so this is how we can use the exclude calculation here. OK, so whatever was there on the view, I uh, removed the region view from there and then I got my values. So let's say let us try some other thing as well. Let us say uh, if I want region wise and then I want. OK, in here, let's say if I have year and month wise, can we do something? Let me just think about it. OK, so maybe what we can do is we can actually let me just edit this one instead of region. Now, let me just get these two values here. One is the order date. OK, and the other one is let's say if I want to get two values here, I can get it this way. The other one is month wise. Now let me just click OK. And now let me just get this value here. OK. OK, so this is my yeah. So if you see this is now giving me the region wise value. OK, this is how much this is around 5 lakh 1255. OK, so it has everywhere given me it has excluded these two things year and month from this uh, view and given the values region wise. OK, so this would be somewhere around. So if I have to check this one. Let me have a new sheet and let me have the region wise sales. <laughs> OK, and let me just put. In the filters. Uh, country as United States. So as you can see, five lakh, sorry, 50 lakhs one. OK, it's five lakh only five lakh one thousand two hundred fifty five. So that is the same expression we have got here. Five lakh one thousand two hundred fifty five for the eastern. We have six lakh seventy eight thousand eight hundred thirty two. Six lakh seventy eight thousand eight hundred thirty four. Sorry. So this way we have the region wise sales. So in the previous case, I excluded the region from the view and then calculated my sales. And in the second case, now the second calculation, I have excluded these two variables from here and then got my region wise sales here. As you can see, any question on this, any question on the exclude part? OK, uh, OK, quick question from my side. Can we do this from the fixed calculation as well? Yes or no? Mm. Yeah, try it out. Can we do this with a fixed calculation? OK, so the answer is yes, we can do this with the fixed calculation as well. OK, in there we could have <coughs> simply taken the region there, so that would would have given me the region wise sales. OK, you can try fixing the region and getting some of sales. And you will move, uh, you'll get the same answer only. OK, so yeah. So let us see one use case for this. OK. Uh, let me just quickly check once. OK. Yeah, so in here what I'm trying to do is OK, just don't be afraid from the visualization. It's fairly simpler. Uh, OK. Yeah, so I am going to select a particular subcategory. OK. And for that particular subcategory that I've selected, I'm going to get my difference. Of the sales for. 
for that selected subcategory. So let's say if I have selected uh, copiers here. OK, as you can see, I've selected the copiers here. So the different so the sales for the copiers is uh, 15 lakh 6000 uh, sorry 9439 and the difference for copiers from copiers would be zero only. OK, and let's say for the chairs. Uh, it would be how much uh, I guess. Yeah, so this difference would be around uh, minus seven seven six five. So this will give me the difference this way. OK, and again, the difference of copiers from chairs would be this much. The difference from uh, bookcases from chairs would be this much. 42,000 something. Then the difference from binders from copiers would be this much. So in a way, I'm just trying to select a particular subcategory and I'm trying to see the difference of sales for the selected subcategory with other subcategories. OK, so let's say if I select appliances. I am trying to see the difference of appliances. OK, the sales uh, difference of appliances with the other subcategories is what I'm trying to see. OK, so this here is my difference and uh, this here is my actual uh, sales for that particular subcategory. OK, so this is what I'm trying to do here. Are we clear with the problem? OK. So again, let us see how we can do this particular or how we can create this particular visualization. So let us first understand the uh, back end calculations for this uh, and then we'll come back to the original visualization. So if you see first I have my subcategories in my rows and then I place my sum of sales. OK, my normal sum of sales that is there. That is what I have uh, put it in the columns part. Then I have uh, created a particular um, parameter here. So let me just show you first. Yeah. OK, so if you remember, I told you there are uh, parameters can be used with the calculations. OK, so that is the advantages. Uh, it brings over the filters. OK, that is one of the advantage. So in here, what I've done is so if subcategory is equal to subcategory parameter, then sales then end. So for that, let me show you. I have created a subcategory parameter as well as you can see it here. It is already there. OK, so this is quite simple to create. All I had to do is just go on the subcategory. And uh, go to the create part and go to the parameter part. It will give you exactly the same thing that we have uh, that I've just showed you here. OK, just click on OK and you will get your subcategory parameter. That's it. Don't uh, need to mess up with anything because it's anyways a list of all these values here is what we needed and we already get it. So nothing to be changed any at any of these places here. Simply click on OK and we'll get the subcategory parameter. And then I've created a calculation that is my selected subcategory sales. Yeah, so in this calculation, if my subcategory is equal to subcategory parameter, then sales otherwise end, but I mean uh, then end only. So for the selected subcategory, so the, let's say if it is appliances, then give me the sales. Otherwise end. OK, uh, so as you can see, I have only for appliances. This thing is selected only for appliances. If I select bookcases that uh, then I will have only for bookcases. If I have for let's say furnishing, then I'll have the sales only for furnishing. OK, now I want the difference between this with all of these. OK, so here is the catch. OK, so why we are doing all this here? 
so let me just explain that so in tableau you can either do the your uh, calculations this way so let's say if you have to subtract then you can subtract either uh, this way okay either horizontally or vertically there is no way you can do the calculation like this okay you can not do the calculation like this this with this this with this this with this this with this this is something that you cannot do okay so that is the reason we have uh, used the calculation here and uh, that is my sales uh, of selected subcategory i guess yeah so if you see here now what i have done here is exclude the subcategory that is there in the view and do sum of selected subcategory sales so the previous one that we have created okay so this selected subcategory sales it should populate everywhere this sales whatever we have selected in the parameter selected subcategory sales okay this is the one that i'm talking about if subcategory is equal to subcategory parameter then sales so this sales is what we want to see so that's why we have taken another calculation that is sales of selected subcategory by taking this calculation again if we want instead of uh, having these two calculations here we can simply uh, get this from here okay in order to write it in one calculation only and put it in here that way also it will give me the same thing if i click on okay that will also give me the same thing so now whenever whatever subcategory i'll select i'll get the sales for that particular subcategory populated here now we can easily do the difference between the two okay so let's say if i want difference of accessories with phones okay this is the phones difference appliances with phones this is the phones difference art with phones since phones is my selected subcategory so this way i can simply do the difference between the two and uh, what is the calculation for that that is a fairly a simpler calculation okay these sum of sales minus this sales of selected subcategory so if i have to show this to you so i can simply get this here and subtract i think this is the one right those of you who are wondering what is the attr attr is also a function in tableau okay Be, uh, it will give you the values if uh, the values are available otherwise it will give you a star again you can just google about it okay But, uh, because uh, again entirely that's a, a whole new different topic there okay yeah okay so this way now you can get your uh, results and you can simply remove these two calculations from between and this was our uh, previous visualization that we wanted to create as you can see okay i've just put uh, into the colors part but again this is my visualization that i wanted to create and these two were my intermediary steps okay remember i told you in the beginning that basically we will be doing this as an intermediary step only so these are all my intermediate steps these two steps here sorry yeah these two steps here <laughs> any questions on this now anyone any questions okay uh i'm quite sure like if you guys have understood the fixed and the exclude part you will be able to do the include part as well so let us just quickly see uh the include part uh 
so in here i have my subcategory wise um, average sales here in the previous one let me just get this one in the first one okay so i have my average sales and then i have my state wise average sales okay so that is the difference here so if you see state is nowhere present here in this particular visualization here so, but i want that to be calculated inside this particular view so what i have done here is i have just taken the include state calculation anyone wants to write this particular calculation okay i give you guys this calculation i'm very sure uh, those of you who have understood it will definitely be able to write it i quickly give you 2 minutes for this okay fairly simpler one whatever we have done till now just apply that knowledge you'll be able to easily write it for the include calculation i gave you quickly 2 minutes for this are you guys trying Are you guys trying, uh, Madhu, Samir, Ravi, Sai, Onik, Nikita? Anyone trying? Guys, am I audible? Hello. Is am I audible? Hello. Okay, no one even responding. Okay, let me just quickly finish it off then. <clears throat> okay, so the calculation that I'll need here would be. I want to include my state and then I want the average sales here. Okay, this way I'll include whatever is there. So basically include calculation says whatever is there on the view in addition to that I want this as well. So what the subcategory wise sales is what I have in the view. In addition to that I want to include state wise average sales. So in here again the method is same. Uh, to write a fix uh, to write a LOD calculation, and now you can just get your average include sales here. Mm. 
yeah i think we need average of this app and maybe uh, in the next step let's say you had to find a difference between these two calculations here okay so this this would be my difference between these two calculation so this there is a possibility that in first place these two things were not required and this was the uh, visualization i was trying to look out for the difference between the average sales and the average sales per region there okay so this way we can use our include calculation here and i have an example here let me just show you that example so in here uh, so this is a pretty good example here so i have my average sales here then i have my average sales per customer here and then i have my um, difference between these two sales okay while also explain you the computation how tableau currently computes um the computation it is doing okay so we are going to see each visualization one by one so let us first see the first visualization that is average sales calculation so okay yeah so if you see the first one is what i'm going to talk about the average sales calculation here and yeah so how this would be computed is so we have the total sum of sales here divided by the total count of sales here so if you divide this 5 lakh 1255 by 2323 then you will get this particular number here same way all of these are calculated okay for all the regions they are calculated this way so this is my region wise average sales okay region wise average sales is what i've got here now i'll explain you the second part of the visualization again this is also region wise average sales but these are region region wise average sales per customer so again i have region wise so i've just taken for one region so that i'll be able to make you understand here so these are my average sales that i've got in here okay this is simple region customer name and average wise average sales here for per customer and how is this calculated let us see in the other one so this is just the working part so i have my sum of sale then i have my count of sale then i have my average sales okay same same way let's say if aaron smelling has done uh, 772 amount of total sales and then four uh, sales is what he has done then the average amount of dollar value per sale would be 193 so this way all of these are calculated what i'm talking about is this 86 193 111 okay so these are all my average sales per customer here okay that is region wise and let's say if i have to remove a uh, customer name from here i'll get the same thing here 241.8 as my average sales so this is what we have got in here mm, yeah 241. Okay, somewhere. Okay, this will give me average sales only, but I want average sales per customer wise. Yeah, so that would be correct here. And this is for which region? Southern US. Mm -hmm. Southern US. Okay uh, it should be somewhere around 231.91 let me just check uh, there is some on something on the calculation part i'm missing on mm, maybe no so there is something that i'm missing on the calculation part here i'll, I'll check and i'll let you know yeah but overall uh, what i am trying to say is so this is my uh, per customer wise sales and maybe this is something that i cannot obtain this way that's why i have used a calculation here so let me just quickly check this calculation 
Um, yeah, so this is sales per customer. Again, if you see, I have included customer name and then sum of sales. Okay, so this is the way I have done. In here it is region. So in addition to region, I want to include my customer name and then do my sum of sales for that customers. Okay, so that way I can do this. And then finally, I've taken the averages of this. Okay, instead of sum, the by default it will give me sum like this, but I want average. So I can take the average here. Okay, and now I basically need the sum between these two. So in first place, these two things might not have been uh, my targeted visualization. I just had to build this only. Okay, so this could be one of the possible scenarios here. Oh, it's showing minus. Yeah. So if this is uh, okay, so if this is, I guess. Uh, less than this one then it would be minus only because i've taken this as the okay, first yeah, average sales per region versus average sales per customer yeah yeah if this is greater than then it will be positive okay so with this yeah i think i'm pretty much done uh, that two on time uh, <laughs> and this marks here the end of the training sessions